Isaiah Fisher, please, and stays this way. Good. Halas, inshallah, we're going to continue the topic from yesterday. So, uh, as I said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted each and every one of us in a different way. Some one of us uh, have a beautiful voice, some are blessed with money, some are blessed with a good health, some are blessed with a good family, good job, and so on and so forth. But sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take something away from you. We spoke about this a long time ago. Now to say for example, if someone has a good wife or someone has a good husband and a good job, and they have a car. They don't have kids. If someone has kids, they have a good job. Maybe they don't have a good health. If someone has a good health, they have kids, no money. Why? Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took something away from you, you will always be saying, Ya Allah, help me. So those who don't have a job, they will say, Ya Allah, give me a job. Those who don't have a good health, they pray for a good health. Those who uh, are not married, they say, Ya Allah, give me a good spouse. Right? So you always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you everything. Like you have money, millions of dollars, you have a good job, you have a good family, a good health, a big house, fancy car. Most people, when they reach this point, they never pray. They turn their back on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is mentioned in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا أَنْعَمْنَا عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ أَعْرَضَ وَنَأَى بِجَانِبِهِ وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ فَذُو دُعَاءٍ عَلِيمٍ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when I shower my blessings on people, they turn their back to me. Like, they don't pray to me because they don't need me. This is how they think. But when they are in a difficult time, they go through difficult times, they feel sick, they're going through surgery, they go to jail, someone dies in the family, they get laid off, oh, they come to Allah crying and asking for help. This is the human nature. So what we need to do, this is my advice, if something is missing from your life, like you need help, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also in the meantime, you have to appreciate whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Most of the time, as I said, we always compare ourselves to other people. Now, let's say, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted you in a different way. He gave you a beautiful voice, or you can memorize quickly or something, and your friend, his family is blessed with a lot of money. Now you compare themselves to, to, to them, and I say, okay, why me? I don't have money. Everyone has money except for me. You compare yourself to them, Forgetting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you in a different way. Maybe He gave you a good health, a good voice, people love you. You are gifted in a different way. So you should always appreciate whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. As I say, look at the full half of the cup. If you look at the example of Urwa ibn Zubayr, for example, I'm going to mention a couple of uh, quick stories and I'll let you go, inshallah. Urwa ibn Zubayr, uh, his story is very famous. Uh, one day, uh, they cut off his, his foot. He had a, a, a problem in his foot. He lost his foot. They had to take it, they, they had to cut it off, or the illness or the, uh, the sickness will spread to his body, the rest of his body, so they had to cut it off. The same day, his son fell off the house, the roof, and he died. And he was saying, Alhamdulillah. And people said, Okay, why are you saying Alhamdulillah? He said, Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me four limbs two arms and two feet, he took one of them, he took one leg. He could have taken all of them, he left three limbs for me, he took only one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me four children, he took one and he left three for me. So I appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has left for me. Another example, you probably heard this example before, they call it the 99 rule. So basically there was a king, and the king was stressed out, he had a servant, he used to cook for him and clean and do everything. And the servant was happy. 
So the king asked his advisor, why is my servant happy all the time? I'm not happy. So the king, the advisor said, okay, let us see if he's really happy or not. Let's try the 99 rule. So what happens at night, they took a bag of money and they put on the bag 100 dinars. This is what they wrote on the bag of gold. 100 pieces of gold. This is what the sign says on the bag. So they put it in front of the house, they knocked the door, so the servant came out, he found the bag with the note that says 100 dinars. Here, 100 dinars. 100 dinars. Okay. 100. Yeah, the S is missing, my bad. So, uh, the servant, his wife, and his kids, the whole night, they were counting the money. And they found out that the money is actually 99 pieces of gold. 99 dinars, not 100, as the sign says. The whole night, they were counting the money. They started all over several times. And they were not happy. Where is our 100 golden pieces? Now, the servant started to... Uh, blame his wife for the missing dinar. Where did this dinar go? You must have dropped it somewhere. And the wife started to fight with her husband. I didn't drop it. Maybe you put it in your pocket. And the parents started to blame the kids. And the kids started to blame their parents. And in the morning when the servant went to the king, the servant was so stressed out. Like he couldn't sleep the whole night. They were fighting over one dinar. So the wazir said to the king, you see the problem? The problem is the whole night they were fighting over one dinar and they forgot an important thing that they already have 99. They shouldn't fight. Allah gave them 99 and now they are stressed out. They are miserable because they are missing one. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted you in different ways and one thing is missing from your life, say for example you have a good health, you have a good house, a good place, but you don't have a good voice. When you make a van you sound like Donald Duck. You know, you shouldn't complain because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted you in many other ways and you need to say Alhamdulillah. So this is the lesson for today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and your family and give, give you many gifts and, and blessings. I mean, I mean, see you tomorrow inshallah. Jazakallah. Thanks for coming.